Chapter 19 This is not the end. In a swift and calculated move, the man with cat eyes signaled to his security guard to retrieve Zishan. Moments later, the static-filled voice of the guard crackled over the walkie-talkie. Boss! Zishan isn't here, and I've been captured by Mr. Aga's men. What? Zishan isn't there? The leader's tone turned sinister. This means, Mr. Aga, that our negotiation time has come to an end. You may not realize it, but ending our dialogue signifies the end of a mighty forces conversation with a far weaker one. You still have time to withdraw your police from my territory. Otherwise, I will press this button, and you will have just five minutes. In that time, you won't be able to get your son to the hospital. Before Aga could make a decision, an urgent message crackled over Inspector Shoaib's wireless. Aga stepped out of the bungalow with his team. It can't be, Aga muttered. Sir, please hear me out, Inspector Shoaib implored. Time is running out. Come to the main gate and listen. All right, Mr. Aga, Inspector Shoaib continued, realizing the gravity of the situation. I'm here. Your men are coming out quietly. As Aga exited the bungalow, the saboteur's accomplices swiftly retrieved their weapons, and the leader, the enigmatic white bear, couldn't help but laugh. Once Aga reached the main gate, he locked eyes with Inspector Shoaib. The atmosphere was tense, and the saboteurs were ready for their next move. The white bear-like figure barked orders, and the saboteurs unleashed a hail of gunfire toward the police officers from their fortified position inside the bungalow. Chaos ensued, and Inspector Shoaib's team scrambled for cover. As Aga Imran stood at the gate, contemplating his next move, he received a vital message from Inspector Shoaib. Keep your composure, Inspector Shoaib advised, interpreting Aga's unspoken thoughts. I was fully aware of what was happening inside. Zishan is safe, and I've already arranged for him to be taken to the hospital. You need to get there immediately. All right. I'm on my way, Aga Imran replied, but with a determined resolve, he added, no one will escape alive from that bungalow. As soon as Aga Imran departed for the hospital, Inspector Shoaib contemplated Zishan's daring actions inside the bungalow. He doubted anyone inside would survive the impending explosion. Upon reaching the hospital five minutes later, Aga Imran, his injuries still fresh, was trembling with worry, his thoughts consumed by Zishan. He approached the operating room and was relieved to see Zishan inside, sharing a moment of laughter with the doctor. Overcome with emotion, Aga embraced Zishan, tears streaming down his face like a child. Dr. Siddiqui immediately attended to Aga Imran's injuries, extracting the bullet from his arm and skillfully dressing the wound. After the necessary first aid, Dr. Siddiqui divulged the details of the capsule retrieved from Zishan's body. It was composed of two parts, a transmitter and a time bomb. They had managed to remove the capsule mere moments before it detonated. Aga Imran's relief was palpable. As the weight of the situation lifted, Zishan recounted his daring feats inside the bungalow. He had been locked in a room by the saboteurs, but through sheer determination, he had escaped by breaking a window. From there, he had explored the bungalow's interior, eventually finding his way to the basement. There, he stumbled upon a massive cache of weaponry, ammunition, and crates of dollars. With extraordinary resourcefulness, Zishan rigged an explosive device, ensuring that if they failed to evacuate in time, the burning fuse would reach the gunpowder pile. He then exited the basement, sealing the door behind him.
When he emerged, he was discovered by the police, and Inspector Shoaib immediately had him rushed to the hospital, keeping the saboteurs distracted. Inspector Shoaib had made multiple attempts to apprehend the saboteurs, wishing to unveil the international conspiracy, but their relentless gunfire and refusal to surrender thwarted his efforts. Time passed swiftly, and inevitably, the lit fuse reached the gunpowder, resulting in a series of explosions. The once magnificent bungalow was reduced to rubble in a matter of moments, ensuring that none of those who conspired against the country survived. Aga Imran prepared to leave for the police academy, while Zishan was ready to return to school after the holidays. Before parting ways, Aga received an unexpected gift, handed to him by gatekeeper. Opening the package, he discovered a bottle of black man perfume. Zishan immediately asked Gardner how was that man. He replied that he was in a red jeep, cat eyes that were small in proportion to his face. The hair was blonde. I also asked him his name but he said Aga Imran knows me well. You just deliver this gift to him. Dad. Zishan was worried and asked his father, Will all of bungalow people would have survived? Aga reassured his son, No, only their leader will have survived. This individual is cunning and dangerous, and he never spares those who work alongside him during perilous missions. There must be a secret passage within that bungalow known only to him. With Allah's guidance, a day will come when we enter our enemy's abode and bring him to justice. As they looked to the future, the father and son shared a moment of profound determination, vowing to protect their homeland from those who sought to harm it.